Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. I got something special for you today. A custom fret crowning tool that's going to save you time and money and help you get a better playing guitar neck. So I'm going to show you how to make this fret crowning tool yourself and I'm going to show you how it works. Um, but before I do, I want to give credit to Dan Thompson from Guns and Guitars. He came up with a custom fret crowning tool that basically gave me all of the ideas for how I was going to do this one. I've obviously modified it um, to something that I think is going to work better for myself. But Dan did a great job of explaining why it works, how it works, how frets are supposed to be crowned, and he did a great demo. So I'm going to link his video in the description. I highly recommend that you check it out. Listen to his um, description of how this thing works and drop us a comment. Let us know which one you like better or, or why you would make one over the other or just tell him I said hi. So just briefly here, and like I said, Dan explained all of this really well in his video, but the idea is in order to fret a guitar, you have to make contact with your finger right below or right behind the fret so that the string makes contact on the top of the fret. And you want kind of a sharper corner there so that the string is contacting in one specific place so that your guitar intonates properly. Now to be clear, a well-crowned fret isn't sharp, it's an arc. It's an arc and then right at the top we have that apex of the arc where the string makes its contact. So when you're going to crown a fret after leveling it, right when you level it, you're gonna have those flat spots on top. You need to get rid of that and create that nice arc. Sorry, we've got a bit of a scenery change here because this is where my table saw is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a piece of wood. In this case, I have a piece of walnut, one that fits in my hand reasonably well. You want it to have at least, you know, three quarters of an inch thick in my opinion. Um, and we're gonna cut this down so that we have a 45 degree angle. And we're gonna do that on each side, all right? So we're gonna end up with a cut there and there. And I'm gonna do that on the table saw. And then we're gonna make sure that those edges are nice and smooth. We're gonna do a little bit of rounding over the top with some sandpaper to make it comfortable to hold. And you're gonna put sandpaper on each side there. And I'll show you how this works, but we want a nice thin area down the middle here that we can rest on the fretboard. It's wood on wood, so it's not gonna do any damage, but we're gonna tape the fretboard anyway to make sure that it doesn't. We'll run that down the middle, and then you'll be able to angle it as you go. And I like having this longer surface so that I can do longer strokes with it, get something a little easier to grip, and have a longer piece of sandpaper so that it doesn't wear out as easy. That's kind of the differences between mine and Dan's method. He's got something thinner, it uses a small piece of sandpaper. It's very easy to control, so that's a benefit. And also, when he wears out that bit of sandpaper, he just moves it down, trims off the end. Very convenient, great system. Not quite what I'm gonna go for, so yeah. We'll see how this turns out. So what I'm gonna do is take the table saw and set it to 45 degrees. I'm gonna mark this off and trim the edges. And I'm gonna leave just a thin, flat spot in the middle so that I'm able to use that as a point of reference for my 45 degrees. Let's get started with the cutting. Well, I, uh, I went home, wanted some better coffee. Here's what we've got now. Now, before we move on, let me say that the smart way to do that, and I probably said this in voiceover too, would have been to take a longer piece and cut it carefully and then cut it down to size. What I did there was pretty dangerous. And as you noticed, my saw didn't have a guard. I don't have one of those automatic stopping ones. I took a lot of risks there. Don't do that, please. I really should not be doing that. It's just, that's all I've got. All right, so let's show you what we're dealing with here. What we have is this thin, flat spot on top. It's about a quarter inch thick, and that will fit between any of the frets on the board. No problem, nice and flat. Gives us a nice point of reference for starting. I'm gonna go over that with some high grit sandpaper on a block. You'll see me do that in a second, and, uh, and just make sure that it's all good to go. Then we've got our sides at 45 degrees off of that. So that's gonna give us our starting point for our angle. Nice flat top, not that that matters. We're not gonna turn this thing into a fret leveling beam or anything like that. We're gonna do that separately in a different video. I'll show you how to make your own one of those. So what we'll do is we'll round these over because you're gonna use it like this, okay? So let's get this dealt with. We'll make sure that these are nice and flat and smooth and then we'll attach our sandpaper and I'll show you how this thing works. All right, so let's start with the top here. 
I've got some 400 grit and 600 grit sandpaper stuck on these acrylic pads so that I know that it's gonna stay nice and flat, right? And you can do this either way. You can move this or move this. I'm gonna do it with this. Just make sure I'm nice and flat here. That's important to apply pressure and make sure, like I said, that you're staying nice and flat along that. You don't wanna change the angle on this. And then we'll come in and do the same on these. Now this time I can use the table to hold it straight on here, right? And just go back and forth. Sorry for the shaking camera a little bit there. This table isn't as stable as I would like it would be. All right, and then I'll do the other side. I'm just flipping my paper around as well. And there we go. Get those sides nice and flat. Wipe them off a little. And then we'll come in just briefly with our 600 grit and repeat this process to make sure everything's nice and smooth. And just make sure that that's all nice and clean and ready to go. So now it's time to make this thing a little bit more comfortable now that this is all smoothed out and ready for our paper. And we'll do that just by rounding off these top edges a little bit. The tape, the paper, doesn't need to go that high. So we can do pretty much whatever we want up here. I'm just gonna do that with some 320 grit. And literally that's all I'm doing is coming in and taking off that sharp edge. Maybe making this a little bit rounded over the edge here. Making sure not to mess with this side at all. Just to make sure that it's gonna be reasonably comfortable for me to work with. And that just makes it a little easier on the hands when you're holding it. Now it's time to attach our sandpaper. I'm not gonna bother putting a finish on this as you may have noticed. We're just gonna go ahead with the sandpaper aspect of it. What I'm gonna do is attach a piece of masking tape. I'm gonna take it, make it a little bit longer than our item, and I'm gonna tape right up against that top edge because obviously the frets are right against the fretboard. So we need this thing to be able to sand very close to the fretboard. Tape right against the top and leave just a little bit to go over the sides like that so that we have something to use to pull it off after. And we'll do that on both sides. Okay, so our top is still clear, uninterrupted, and now we've got this on each side. Now we need to take our sandpaper and attach it to this. Now this is where we need to think about what sandpaper we need. We need something that's gonna remove a little bit of material at a reasonable pace, but then we also need something that's gonna get these nice and smooth so we don't have a ton of work to do after on the polishing. The whole idea here is to save some time. So for the material removal aspect, I'm gonna be using 800 grit paper. And uh, yeah, that's gonna be on my rougher side. And then on the other side, I'm gonna be using some, where is it here? some 2000 grit paper. You're gonna need a pair of scissors to cut this or a razor blade, and we're just gonna glue it on. That's why we have this tape on here. The tape is gonna prevent it from sticking right to the thing. It's gonna make it easy for us to change after. So we'll just cut a nice thin strip of this, about the width of a piece of tape. Now obviously it's, it's best to have one nice straight edge here. So try and measure it properly as far as that aspect goes. But if this is a little longer, that's not the end of the world. If it's a little shorter, that's also not a big deal. I'm gonna do the same thing. I gotta make sure I'm not cutting more than one piece at a time here. The same thing for my 800 grit. All right, and then what I'm gonna to use to stick them on, assuming I do a good enough job to separate them, is a little bit of super glue. So of course, there's not much to this. You just need to get some super glue on the back of there. Try and spread it around a little bit. It'd be nice to have a slightly more liquidy glue, but this was readily available, so this is what I'm using. All right, get some on there. And without gluing yourself to your tool, make sure you line up that edge well as you can. Stick it in place and press it down. Now let's talk about the fretboard, how we're gonna deal with this. So first of all, 
as you can see, this obviously fits in between these frets, but if we move on over, it also fits between these frets, okay? See that? So it fits in there perfectly, about a quarter inch, that's the maximum that we can have to be able to fit in that area. All right, now for demonstration purposes, let's, uh, let's take a look at this one, for example. Let's say we had to crown this fret. First of all, obviously, we're gonna protect the fretboard on either side, even though this shouldn't do any damage to it because it's a nice, smooth piece of wood. That doesn't matter. It's better to protect it than not to protect it. So we'll just lay down a piece of tape on either side. Then, of course, you can move these down or you can tape off the whole thing, whatever works for you. And the, the idea here is we want to, and like I said before, Dan explains all this very well in his video, we want to create a crown on here, we want to create an arc, and we want to leave a little high spot, a little ridge in the middle kind of. So you can eyeball this, or the diligent way to do it is to put a line of Sharpie across the top so that you can then go in and sand from each side until that line becomes as fine as possible. And with our line on there, we start with our heavier grit, our 800. We start at that 45 degrees so that the bottom of this is flat. Move up to the fret and start sanding. Do that a little bit. See that we're taking off a little bit of that Sharpie. Doesn't take much. And then we start to angle this way. Start to angle toward the top and reduce that Sharpie line even further. Keep in mind you're following a bit of a, a curve here, okay? So I'm gonna switch hands. Now this is a fairly long piece and I've only really used just a tiny bit over here, so don't forget that to make this last longer without having to change paper, you can use different parts of it. Okay, I can do that and then come back here if I need to, but I don't need to right now. So again, on this side, I'll start flat and gradually start to angle a bit. And I'm gonna keep doing that until I've got just a very thin line of Sharpie right along the top of this. All right, so let's take a look at what we have here now. So as you can see, that's pretty much perfect. We've got a beautiful thin line here. And the 800 grit's pretty smooth, but it still does this very quickly. It does a fairly good job. If you've got a really rough fret, you can try a 600 instead if you've had to do quite a bit of leveling. But an 800 seems fine for most applications. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna switch over to my, my 2000 grit side and basically just polish this thing using the exact same technique. I start at my 45 degrees, and I'm not as worried about taking material off here, but I still don't want to get rid of that line. I just work my way, oh, that was, that was good. Just work my way up and over the same way as I did before to get this polished up to 2000 grit so that it's basically done. And all I need to do is quickly polish up the top. All right. So that's finished now. It's polished up to 2000. It's nice and shiny. And I've just got this razor thin line on top. And all I need to do to deal with that is go in with either a micro mesh um, sanding pad or my fret erasers. I'm gonna use my fret erasers because I have them. If you want a micro mesh sanding pad, they work very well. Also, you can check the link in the description to my Amazon influencer page and pick one up there. This is pretty smooth, so I'm gonna start with a medium on this. You guys have seen me do this before. And that's gonna take off the last of that Sharpie and really get this thing kind of up to a pretty damn good shine. These are the Crimson Guitars um, fret erasers. I've used other fret erasers. I don't like them as much. Honestly, I prefer the micro uh, mesh pads over the other fret erasers, but these crim Crimson Guitar ones are really nice. The only problem is you have to get them shipped in from the UK, so 
sometimes that's just not worth it. <laughs> but I'll leave that decision up to you guys. Obviously those aren't available on Amazon, so you're not gonna find them in my influencer thing. If you're gonna go for something from there, I haven't even put the other fret erasers in because I don't like them. I would just go for the micro mesh. All right, and there we have a beautifully crowned and extremely shiny fret. Now the last step on this, and you guys have seen me do this before, is a little bit of polish. I think a little bit of polish makes, makes a, lot, a nice difference. It finishes shining it up, makes it as smooth and shiny as possible, which isn't just aesthetically pleasing, but it also makes the guitar play better. Makes the strings move more easily uh, with less friction and is just generally a faster, easier instrument to play when it's got that done. And the polishing is another very straightforward step. You just use a little bit of metal polish. I'm using the Auto Sol because it's relatively thick and a small rag. Put some polish on the rag. Apply it and just buff it. Just go over it a few times, nice and hard, lots of pressure until your cloth turns a nice shade of disgusting black. And that's how you know it's worked. That's how you know it's polishing properly. That black, if I'm not mistaken, is the little bits of metal that the polish is abrading off of there to get a full polish. And we'll take a look in a second here and you'll see how nice this fret is compared to the other ones. Well guys, that's it. That is my new fret crowning tool. As you can see, the results speak for themselves. It works quite well. It's very fast. And uh, it's really easy to change the paper on this. Because I put that piece of masking tape on there first, all I do is grab that, peel it off, and put a new piece of tape on, and go again. I'm not gonna change the paper on this one because I did one fret, and obviously, it's still good. Uh, for quite a while, it will still be good, I think. When I take this off, because I've got that masking tape there and I've basically created an adhesive back piece of um, sandpaper, what I can do the first time is just flip it around, all right? And then if you really wanna go a little bit more gung-ho with this, you're only using the bottom. So I can cut these to half this um, size. What I can also do is once I'm done this, I can cut this piece in half and use the opposite ends of both of those. Again, they're still adhesive backed because they're attached to a piece of tape. So as always guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe because I've got more tricks like this coming out. Once again, a big thank you to Dan Thompson. Like I said, he came up with the initial idea that gave me kind of the concept for modifying it to turn it into this. Don't forget, drop us a comment. Let us know which one you like. And yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching once again, and I will see you next time. Have a good one.